what we really try to promote and what we really think the next steps and will continue to be uh, going on in this field is building a culture of responsibility online. And as Ostwig found, you know, it, there's no one single solution to this. There are, you know, what we see as probably six different but overlapping areas that have to take part to build a culture of responsibility online. So we need to promote reasonable government oversight and support. The government can do a lot in terms of funding education and, resource, uh, and research. I think that's a great you know, role that the government can play. We need effective law enforcement. We need good laws, and we need law enforcement that's working when appropriately to tackle the big issues. We need tech-savvy teachers. Our teachers today need to learn about online safety issues so they can educate their students, and they also need to not be afraid to bring technology into the classroom. What we really need are empowered parents who are comfortable and in discussion with their kids about what their kids are doing online, setting family safety contracts, using the parental control tools available, and just talking to their kids about their experiences. Then we'll end up with resilient kids who make wise choices online about the content they access, what they post online, who they're contacting, who they allow to contact them, and really working on their content, not getting involved in cyberbullying, not sexting. Um, you know, at FOSI, we believe that with this foundation of safety and security and privacy, we use digital and media literacy to build a sense of digital citizenship online. So we're trying to move the rights and responsibilities that we take for granted in the offline world into the online world. We want to teach the rights of free speech, privacy, and safety, while also teaching kids that they have responsibilities online. They need to adhere to the terms of service that are in place. They need to report abusive postings. They should be talking to grown-ups, feeling comfortable to approach their parents when they come across content that they're not comfortable with. And they shouldn't bully someone online just as they wouldn't bully them on the playground. So as Ostwig found, the online world and offline world are not distinct for kids, and we need to make sure that we're teaching them these new social norms, that the same behavior they use offline needs to apply online as well. We're going to work across sectors and national boundaries to help establish these new social norms of behavior and conduct, particularly as children no longer see this distinction. Some of the ways we're doing this, uh, we are a convener, so we've had two events uh, in Bahrain and Madrid this year to talk to people internationally about what they're doing in terms of online safety and help pr uh, promote some of the best practices. Mike's been with us for both of those trips and kind of talking and giving some ideas to, uh, to people who are in some areas are just getting online and, and kind of trying to figure out what's the best approach to this. We're also having our fourth annual conference here in Washington, D.C. in November on the 9th and 10th at the Mellon Auditorium. We invite all of you to attend and continue the discussions that we have today, the discussions that you'll have in Lithuania later in the year. Um, and one of the big projects we're also working on right now is the First Ladies Initiative for Online Safety. Uh, Verizon, AT&T, Google, and Microsoft are helping us try to get First Ladies from around the world to really take up this topic, to go in their own countries and talk about the importance of online safety, to be a real figurehead for this movement, and set an example for parents around the world so that the First Ladies can work in their own countries, at the regional level, and even at a higher international level to really get these issues out there. Uh, you know, we'd love in America to have Michelle Obama, uh, Michelle Obama, the mom of soon-to-be teenagers who I'm sure will be using Facebook in the next year or two. We'd love to see her taking up this issue and talking about the best practices for online safety and what parents can do to keep their kids safe online.